around in the first few weeks, which is which is I think is pertinent as we approach the second and seventh of uh, of June. The Irish on trade. What our customers are saying, uh, we've got some feedback from recent studies that are done that have been carried out by CGA, so I'd like to share those with you guys. And then just a, a very brief uh, piece on, on, on Brexit uh, and what it has meant for our business on Brexit uh, and what it has meant for our business and potentially what uh, some of the bigger factors for, 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 your, uh, for, for your business in the hospitality in the hospitality sector. Yeah. So first price purchasing. So just to give you a little bit of background. So um, Bullimers Ireland, we have our we have our branded business, but we also have a, a very major wholesale operation. One of the biggest, in fact, if not the biggest in, in, in operation, one of the biggest, in fact, if not the biggest in, 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 in the island of Ireland. Um, and and I suppose we, we've just started uh, maybe a month, maybe maybe a month and a half ago. Um, we 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 managed to get um get get, uh, become, get on board with the first choice um uh, um uh, platform uh, uh we've start we've because as the trade starts to come uh, come back we can start engaging with customers and delivering what what, what we can for 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 each of our first choice purchasing clients so very excited about the opportunity for our brands for our business and what we can achieve uh, together with first choice purchasing at Bulmers Ireland our business so just to give a brief overview of it. As part of the CNC group, um, we operate across, um, I suppose, the British Isles. Uh, in effect, we have a major operation in, in, in Northern Ireland. We 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 own and distribute the Tenants brand there, which is the biggest on, dra on trade draft uh, brand in Northern Ireland. And in fact, we have the biggest plat uh, foot uh, platform in the north in in the hospitality and on trade sector. In plat uh, foot uh, platform in the north in in the hospitality and on trade sector. In Scotland, also, we are the owners of Tenants and Magners in, in that territory. Once again, the biggest on trade draft. Uh, brand in in Scotland. We also have a substantial wholesale business there as well. Uh, in fact, the biggest wholesale business in Scotland. And then in 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 the, in the rest of the UK, we own the Matthew Clark wholesale business, which is which is a business which which delivers into twenty seven thousand pubs annually uh, in 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 Britain. So a very 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 substantial uh, footprint across the British Isles. And then the Irish business is is is, is a pretty big business. Um, uh, with the biggest wholesaler, as I say, across the island of Ireland. Major brands um, and major agencies also. Uh, 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 residents in Cork uh, 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 and uh, ex Galway guy. Um, he is our MD. He is the he is the person who runs this whole business. And our, our FD is also an Irish man. So very much an Irish led operation across the British Isles. The uh, Island of Ireland business. Um, just to give you an idea of some of the brands, we have, just to give you an idea of some of the brands we have: Budweiser, we have Bulmers, obviously is our flagship brand, uh, the biggest cider brand uh, by a country mile on the Island of Ireland. Big export business too, with our Magnus uh, portfolio, with our Magnus uh, brand, um, and some of the brands we we also uh, agency, have agencies for, so like the likes of San Miguel, obviously Tenants, Haverly, a growing brand, Five Lamps, or so like the likes of San Miguel, obviously Tenants, Haverly, a growing brand, Five Lamps, uh, all owned and operated on on the island. Of Ireland, uh, as well as, as I said, a substantial wholesale business in the UK. Some idea of the brands we have over there. Uh, North America operation, which was sold recently, um, we, 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 uh, just in the last uh, couple of couple of months. And then we have a fairly major international path, expat uh, communities across Europe. So just 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 in, in the island of Ireland, we have a major uh, depot uh, network across the island, which brings us in close proximity to all our customers, as well as a, as a substantial um, operation in, in, in down in 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 in, Bar, in, Bar, in Clonmel, where we where we actually. So hospitality UK learning. So look, just just because of our footprint in the UK, obviously we were able to cap capture some data from that. Um, uh, we had the, the the UK returned in April um, uh, to to the hospitality sector and the on trade, I suppose to use that term. And what we found there is that um, uh, from a survey of of consumers, 28% food and drink, but a substantial amount went out just for just for a drinking occasion. And um, then in relation to, uh, to 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 going out again on uh, uh, following up on that first visit, we, uh, we, uh, the the feedback said that 19% of the customers consumers who went out in that first week plan to revisit again over the next couple a couple of days, 28% uh, and then 21% uh, in in the following two weeks. So what we've seen was a, a, a fairly big um, a fairly sizable return uh, by the consumer, but then also following it up with multiple visits thereafter. 54% of the visits were, were, were to pubs, uh, uh, to the on-trade uh, pub, with 35% to, uh, to the restaurant. So red uh, pub with 35% to, uh, to the restaurant. So really um, a real hunger and a desire to to meet people uh, in, in, in an on-trade environment where, where we can mingle as much as possible, uh, social distancing and allowing, but the pubs definitely came back very, very strongly. 
and then just in relation to what type of product that that consumer was consuming, um, 43% were, were 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 very much going towards premium products. So we were treating ourselves. We were going out. We were having um, the top shelf. We were having a draft. Um, we 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 were looking for the the brands that we know and recognise and love, uh, and that was very much what was driving the consumer demand uh, uh, when when they came back out again. Recently, from from CGA, a sample of, of 1,500 accounts, um, and what they're tell what what our customers are telling us is that 34% of our operator, operators are fairly optimistic about the next 12 months, whereas 40% are quite pessimistic over the next 12 months. One in five um, on uh, hospitality um, outlets expect um, only expect. Um, only only one in five expect to be profitable in the first 12 months uh, as the trade returns with so a fairly sizable um, number of outs, um, you know, not overly optimistic about the next 12 months. And three out of four outlets plan to reopen uh, once they can on the 7th of June with another 13% planning to reopen thereafter. And our own internal surveys of our June with another 13% planning to reopen thereafter. And our own internal surveys of our customers are saying that's going to fall at about, uh, about 60% of customers will actually open their doors on the 7th of June. Uh, the 7th of uh, June. Uh, in relation then to what, what customers um, are choosing when they go out, um, a sizable, the sizable majority, uh, sorry, the, um, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the main driver of, of this piece is, is, is about uh, the cleanliness of um, the, the cleanliness of the, uh, of the outlet that they visit. Um, which are, are a good a good experience towards uh, when when they go into the on trade. Obviously, yes, yeah, sorry, cleanliness, uh, quality of quality drivers of what a consumer will look for when they go back out into the trade. And then just from the from the data, five things to consider when planning uh, on reopening uh, on reopening your premises: hygiene and safety, return of the local outdoor spaces, path to purchase, and the right range to have in, in your in your outlet. So just hygiene and safety then in your outlet. So just hygiene and safety then. I suppose uh, a, bi a big increase in, in, in the importance of cleanliness uh, um, uh, when, when, when a consumer goes into your outlet and I suppose a decrease in the, in the reliance on, on the amount of people in the premise. So less people, uh, more hygiene. The amount of people in the premise. So less people, uh, more hygiene. A return of the local, how important is, that is. So one in three consumers plan uh, plan on visiting local venues more often than they did pre-COVID, uh, and then 86% plan on, on visiting either more often or the same amount. And just to understand what a local is, so either more often or the same amount. And just to understand what a local is, so from a publican, a local could be that person who's living next door, or for a hotelier, the, the, the local in this instance might be the person that's up in the room. So how do we make um, the, 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 it feel a, a, like a local, keeping the customer local, whether he's a guest or whether he's a local resident? And the appeal of the outdoors, the outdoors. So how important is outdoor spaces? So 59% of consumers will feel more confident once they visit, uh, once the, uh, the venue they're visiting has an outdoor area. And we found what we found in the UK is that uh, those outlets that opened that had, so those outlets that, that opened that had an outdoor area saw a 22% uh, increase in outdoor space, outdoor space, outdoor space, really important. Uh, path to purchase and menus, then how, how consumers are actually placing their orders and outlet. Um, and, and I suppose that the, the big p uh, piece here is that table service is really is going to be very, very important uh, to, con to the consumer that 52% uh, of customers will, will actually look to place their order at the table with 90% at the bottom of the table is going to be very, very important going forward. And then outlets must find a way to cater for both staff um, and interaction. Um, so 59% of consumers would prefer interaction with the staff, with 41% are happy to use technology. So getting that balance right will be really, really important. I'm sure you've all thought about that. And then finally, the right range, uh, the right range once the outlet returns. Um, you know, pre premium, the, 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 the having, having premium products, having brands that they recognise, customers treating themselves uh, with something that they can only, that they would only associate with being in the on trade or being in, in, in something in, in, in that is that, that is um, on trade hospitality, uh, being been very, very important. Um, and being very, very important. Um, and then rationalizing menus. So 58% of operators suggesting that rationalization of the drinks menu will be fundamentally important to the business. So less tail end products uh, um, available and just bringing it back to the core. 
So Brexit challenges for uh, for for Bulmers Ireland, Brexit challenges for uh, for for Bulmers Ireland, and then as by extension to the to our customers. I suppose look, Brexit is kind of been hidden and it's been dwarfed by COVID, um, and, and it's somewhat come off the agenda. Although lately we can see it, start to see it coming back in again. We had we had the three false starts false starts back in March, April, and October 19. However, it is here now. The chain was in place. We had to ensure we had product for our customers. Uh, so there was it was it was a lot of bringing the um, bring the soldiers up the hill and then and then nowhere to go but it did finally happen at uh, 31st of January um, uh, um, the 31st of De- sorry the 30th of De- December the final uh, the final nail was in the coffin so we have built up our stocks from our perspective Irish business we we trade um, mostly with uh, I would say 95% of all our products are Irish based and Irish supplied so we as a business have had haven't had as big an impact it hasn't had as big an impact on us in our supply chain and uh, we've dealt with it very rigorously I suppose where we are seeing um, in, impact is we are, we are seeing issues as where the UK would have been seen as a land bridge into Ireland. So that's where we are seeing issues as where the UK would have been seen as a land bridge into Ireland. So that would would affect any any kind of products that would come from abroad in group, which that would land in the UK, service the UK market, and then find its way to, to Ireland. And we're thinking more specifically about wine, uh, kind of lower value, sorry, lower volume uh, wine um, um, wine products, um, probably high, more high-end, high, high, uh, expensive uh, products are, are are challenging because we have they would have arrived in the UK as a groupage and then been spread ac- out across and into Ireland. So we can see some kind of rational. We will see some rationalisation and choice around those tail-end, high high-value products um, until we get the supply. Then find this way into, into the Irish market. We'll now have to find a new route to the Irish market directly, which will mean less frequent deliveries um, and then also pro- possibly less range and indeed price increase as we see uh, input costs going up because once again um, the, uh, the, the probably the, the economies of scale and the efficiencies for the Irish market aren't there by leveraging uh, that something that is going to happen and we're going to have to live with um, yeah so 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 I hope that was helpful uh, um, I hope it brought some some insight to you um, thanks very much again David and first choice for giving us this opportunity to speak um, the, the slides will be available afterwards and uh, um, anything that we that I can do uh, to support just let me know David okay thank you my name is Sophie Rooney. I am the co-owner and operator of Chimac, which is a restaurant in Dublin. This morning, I'm going to be sharing our reopening plan, how we hope to market ourselves and set us, ourselves apart in what's going to be quite a crowded market over the next while. So just to start off, I want to share just a bit about us. Uh, put very simply, what we do is we sell fried chicken and uh, put very simply, what we do is we sell fried chicken and Irish craft beer. So the idea itself, if you want to move just to the next slide there, sorry, Uh, the idea itself was inspired by Korea, but we've created a really small kind of concise menu that blends Korean influences with Irish ingredients. So everything we put together, we've put together for the Irish market. So everything we put together, we've put together for the Irish market. We are a fast, casual um, dining restaurant. So we're coming up to our second year anniversary just next week. We're established in May 2019. So we enjoyed a very nice, strong first nine months before obviously the whole world changed and everything kind of departed um, to the heart of Dublin. Um, it is a small space though, so we only have maybe 50 table, f- sorry, 50 seats. Um, so we do have a reliance on table turnover normally. Um, our food is made fresh from scratch. We use high quality ingredients, but we are also um, positioned at quite an accessible price point we feel so we like to think the fast casual doesn't necessarily have to mean any kind of so value and quality are very much at the heart of what we do and what we strive for at Chimac. We would necess- we would normally have a very um, strong link with Dublin nightlife so the restaurant itself would very much be the kind of place you might stop off to on the way to meet some friends on the way back from the cinema on the way to a show um, so obviously a lot has changed then for us in the last 12 months. Obviously a lot has changed then for us in the last 12 months. So Dublin city centre has pretty much become decimated. There is very little local trade. There's no neighbourhoods really nearby us. <clears throat> football, footfall has fallen so greatly. I know at the height of the pandemic, the area, the footfall was down 85%. Um, and I was just reading this on Monday when the shops reopened. Uh, footfall is only about 54% of what it was around Grafton Street. So while it is obviously getting better, there's still a long way from what it once was. We've been working with reduced opening hours due to the lack of trade and staff 
staffing issues as well. So we were once open for um, lunchtime trade, but unfortunately we've tried it out a number of times over the last month. Um, so we're operating for just five days a week from 4 p.m. most days. Uh, we do now have a reliance on third party delivery partners. So our business model has changed quite a lot and their high commissions obviously do play a bit of a part on how our business operates. It wasn't something we had initially gone into business with a huge commission in mind, but it's something that we'll be looking at obviously the next while. When we did open um, during Christmas and the time last year, we did have difficulties turning tables and such because obviously when people went out, it was the first time they'd been out in a long time. They didn't want to leave. And then other people came. They wanted just to get drinks pretty much. So we had little like short um, shortfalls in terms of t turning tables. There was challenges as well. So when we think about remarketing and reopening, uh, we've got a few key objectives. So. We want to fully reopen for lunch and be a seven day dining restaurant. Obviously, this will be a phase basis. We're hoping to reopen in a couple of weeks, obviously, with everyone else for outdoor dining. We have seats for maybe just 15 people for outdoor dining. We have seats for maybe just 15 people in an uncovered space outside. So on a day like today, it wouldn't be much use, but we're delighted because it's something that we haven't had in so long and a chance to engage with our customers is going to be brilliant. Uh, we want to redevelop ourselves as a business that's not solely reliant on these third party delivery services. We know they will play a part, but we don't want it to be not solely reliant on these third party delivery services. We know they will play a part, but we don't want to be, them to be so important uh, to our bottom line. We want to differentiate in an ever competitive market as well. When we launched, uh, there was maybe one or two competitors offering a similar fried chicken style menu um, in Dublin City. And now I'm not sure if you're aware of it, but there it is absolutely um, in Dublin City. And now I'm not sure if you're aware of it, but there it is absolutely exploded. Fried chicken is everywhere and it has grown exponentially. So we want to differentiate and uh, remind people what sets us apart. We want to reconnect with our customers, reach new audiences. And uh, in a time like now, we think it's so important to develop an image which conveys safety. It's so important to develop an image which conveys safety, welcome and thoughtfulness as well. So how we're going to do this, we've got a, just a short plan to go through for you guys. So firstly, we want to make it easy. We want to make it as simple as possible and leave absolutely no space for confusion. So it's about clear and concise communication. We're going to take an omni-channel approach. So across our entire Google business account, through to all our social media accounts, open table, anywhere we have a profile. So covering every single every single place from TripAdvisor to Twitter to everything in between. We want to focus on the key information that customers want to need, the dates, the times, the hours and the booking information for reopening. We need to ensure that it's upfront. So whether that's on our Instagram profile, Twitter feed or our Facebook, we want to ensure that it's there and available for them. We also want to take a proactive approach to communication. So uh, for us, that means preemptively thinking about what are the questions that they're going to have and offering them their answers in our communications. Um, so making it easy for them from start to end. So for example, on our website, we have FAQ section. We'll be updating that they can expect when they come to visit GMAC. That said, we will want to be aware of boring people with constant opening hour updates. Everybody is going to be out there telling them that uh, they're reopening and it's not the most engaging content. So rather than just shouting at them, we're opening, we're opening this time, this time, we want to show them what they, they're missing. What we will be doing is reminding them why. So reminding why they ever wanted to come to GMAC. Um, basically, we want to use our USPs, our point of difference to our advantage. So our food, our staff, our location. We want to allow these elements to shape our communications. So, for example, we have been working with Manor Farm on upgrading our chicken from free range to a higher welfare chicken called the half off on communicating outwardly until we reopen, as we see it as a real opportunity to put that out there and set ourselves apart from what, uh, what the competition might be doing. Then in our experience as a food business, a picture paints a thousand words. Uh, food photography for us uh, outperforms any other content we put up out there. So we'll be investing in new photographs of outdoor seating out there. So we'll be investing in new photographs of outdoor seating, new specials, everything that we do. We also want to create engaging content. So rather than a one way conversation, uh, we want to have a two way conversation that involves them. So we're going to ask as many questions. So, for example, tell us about the things that you missed about coming to GMAC. What are you most excited about coming to see when you come into us? And then we that you missed about coming to GMAC. What are you most excited about coming to see when you come into us? And then we can use their answers to shape our communication moving forward. Then something that we think is very important, um, not just for our marketing, but for our business as well, is to rebuild the community. So I know that Nick touched on this, but obviously the last 12 months have seen people retreat to their local area businesses, obviously, um, but it has left Dublin city centre as a bit of a shell of what it once was. So we want to do what we can to make Dublin city centre destination again and reposition it as a very vibrant place to be. 
We see the local businesses in Ainger Street and the surrounding areas as our neighbours rather than our rivals. And we believe that a high tide raises all boats. We've got to know these people personally being nobody else on the streets. Um, and we want to do what we can to support them as well. Uh, we want to support these local businesses by creating shareable content about the area. So, for example, the perfect place to stop off to get a pint on your way to Chimac, of course, or the best cocktails, the best drinks, our favourite independent retailers. Um, we often get regular staff meals from local businesses and of things, sharing them online and ensuring that we're tagging these businesses. They're more likely to share again and share our business and create a kind of shared sense of community. Throughout this content, we always used to try to use strong photography as well. Um, there are not many events, events planned for Dublin City Centre yet, but we're hoping as things begin to reopen, there will be outdoor events, outdoor festivals, comedy shows and things like that. And we will very much integrate that into our marketing plan um, when they do eventually get launched. Uh, we'll also reach out to the local offices who once supported us so strongly, tell them thank you for your support over the last year or two, and then let them know that we will be reopening for lunch once we have a date in mind and then let them know that we will be reopening for lunch once we have a date in mind. Then we think that now more than ever, creating a sense of occasion is incredibly important. Uh, so we need to offer them a compelling reason to come back into town. And we'll do this by delivering a very specific where and when. So as I mentioned, we'll, we, have been opening, we have been opening from 4 p.m. and we'll be moving back to opening to all day dining rather than nighttime only. So we need to build a lot of awareness about this transition. So we'll be focusing on the different times and the specific offers that we do, for example, lunchtime specials, brunch, Something we've done recently to try and drive sales on uh, Sunday morning would predominantly be time for us as well. Uh, we've launched on the right hand side here, we've got a photo of our Chi Mac muffin. So we launched a, a breakfast sandwich pop up, which has got a completely different menu. It's not chicken focused. Um, so doing that kind of brought a different audience into us and has given us content that we can share and an opportunity to engage with people which we wouldn't have had otherwise. Over the last year or two, one year or so, while we've had time, and there's been a number of items that we've thought, oh, this is delicious, this is amazing, but it doesn't travel well. So what we will do, which we've been doing with the breakfast sandwich pop up, but we'll be doing a number of dine in only specials that people will be able to have for outdoor seating, um, but it won't be available on delivery. So we're hoping that this will engage people. To Another element that we've really missed over the last while is the human element. So without that la without that face to face interaction with customers, we haven't had the opportunity to meet them, engage with them. Uh, then when we actually have, obviously wearing, sa wearing masks is essential for safety, but it does impact um, the service experience safety, but it does impact um, the service experience somewhat and somewhat dehumanize us. So what we want to do is bring hospitality and the human element back to the fore in our outward communications. So it's a very simple approach. We just want to launch a simple series of meet the team social media posts. This will enable people to meet the people behind the masks. Many of our staff have been able people to meet the people behind the masks. Many of our staff have been with us from the start, which we feel is a really great asset. And um, many of our customers may have gotten to know them, had personal relationships. So we want to push this forward and promote it as much as possible. We will also be encouraging reviews by uh, listing a link to our Google reviews on our bills and receipts. And we're hoping of if some nice stories come out about our service and our staff, we'll be sharing, that, sharing them externally on social media, but also internally with our staff not only because it's obviously positive to acknowledge um, great feedback, but we want to kind of bolster that sense of pride, create as much buy-in we can from the team that we have and make everyone that works at GMAC feel part of something great. We feel that strengthening the internal team and the internal brand is so important right now. We've had a number of challenges trying to attract talent over the last number of months. So anything we can do to retain the people that we have is greatly beneficial. Something that would have been counterintuitive to us maybe a year or so ago is positioning ourselves as a small business. Um, but at, over the is positioning ourselves as a small business. Um, but at, over the last 12 months or so, there's been such a huge outpouring of support for small businesses, which is absolutely amazing. And we wanted to kind of jump on board on that and utilize that as much as we can. We are a small independent um, business, which is owner operator um, owner operated. Uh, we want to educate people about our story, educate people about our story, how GMAC came to be and how they can support us in our communications moving forward over the next number of months. I spoke briefly about how we plan to engage with the local businesses in our area, but we also want to build relationships with other small businesses, not necessarily nearby. 
So something we've been doing over the last uh, last month or two is working with not near our locality at all. Uh, they've been using our sauce to ratch caramel uh, on their baked hams, which are absolutely delicious. Uh, so it's been a really mutually beneficial relationship for us. We've had great feedback, great engagement from absolutely different demographics and people from a geographic area that's completely outside of our, radi our delivery radius who might never have over the last year or so. So we hope to see the benefit of that when we reopen and they can come in and we'll continue to look at these kind of aspects. Safety is obviously something that is so important for everyone to hear and learn about. Um, there's a Nielsen study that said 50% of consumers want to see social distancing accommodations. And I think that might even be an, under, an understatement. Right, to finish, what we're doing to make Chimac a safe place for everyone to visit. Uh, we do take safety very seriously, but we do feel that it's not necessarily something that has to be communicated in a serious manner. Absolutely, everybody will be trying to convey this message. So we feel that thinking about it maybe a little bit differently might have a little bit more cut through. On the right hand side here, we've got an ad that maybe a little bit differently might have a little bit more cut through. On the right hand side here, we've got an ad from Burger King. There's no need to avoid the crowd when the crowd wants to avoid you. And you can see their social distancing whopper and the layer, four layers of um, fresh white onion. So we thought it's just an interesting thing and we're looking at ways to bring our own tone of voice. So we thought it's just an interesting thing and we're looking at ways to bring our own tone of voice and our brand into our safety message to hopefully get a more engaged reaction versus a little bit of a overkill kind of feeling about generic messaging. We are, however, aware that not everybody is going to be rushing to dine indoors and outdoors. So our overall aim is to build a brand. So in addition to communicating that we'll continue to serve our customers through delivery, uh, we want to create as many opportunities as we can for customers to develop a relationship from afar. During the first lockdown, we began bottling our sauces and selling them direct to consumers through our website, uh, through delivery and through collection at our store. Um, we have begun diversifying into two cookies with house-made ice cream and they're delicious. Uh, but we began selling them into independent retailers and cafes. Uh, we've also developed our branding here on the right-hand side um, for our sauces as well. And we hope to begin selling them into independent retailers in the next couple of months. Ultimately, our goal is to take our brand from Chimac, the restaurant itself, into consumer. So that is everything from me. Thank you so much for your time. My contact details are there and I'm happy to answer any questions. I will pass you on to Brian now. Thank you, Sophie. Um, it's very interesting there, Sophie. A lot of what I'm going to present on uh, in terms of the challenges are uh, very, very similar to what you've experienced over the past while and, and are experiencing still. Um, so good morning, everybody. I'll start start off by saying thank you very much to, to David and the team at FCP for inviting me to, to speak to you this morning. I'm just going to talk a little bit about the Montanati Hotel, just a brief introduction of the hotel with the help of the video. Um, I'll speak about what we've done over the of the hotel with the help of the video. Um, I'll speak about what we've done over the, the course of the, the various lockdowns. I'll speak a little bit about recruitment and retention and just uh, what we're doing at the moment in, in terms of readying for, for full reopening on the second of June. So uh, Zoe, if you want to play the video there as an introduction. So I, I don't think the sound is working there. So as the video is playing, I'll just explain a little bit about the hotel. Um, we're a 107 bedroom hotel with uh, also have 26 self-catering apartments as well on site in a separate building. Um, this is the, the hotel's gone undertaken a full refurbishment uh, project since four or five years, been on a journey of, I suppose, redevelopment and repositioning in terms of brand and as well as the actual physical product. Um, so, uh, and that's still ongoing at the moment. Uh, at the moment, we're, we're um, constructing a, a new rooftop bar, uh, which is due to open kind of late July. And uh, over the last few years, due to open kind of late July, and uh, over the last few years, as you see there, we, we've opened our Bellevue Spa um, uh, two years ago. Uh, we've also undertaken a, a refurbishment of our leisure centre and um, really kind of just setting ourselves up uh, for, for the future. But um, it's quite quite a big uh, kind of future, but um, it's quite quite a big uh, kind of, I suppose, footprint in terms of the Montanati Hotel here in Cork. And it, it's a, a hotel that's been here for, for many, many years, but has been completely transformed over the course of the last uh, four or five years and will continue to its trans transformation over the next kind of three or four years as well. So just the, the various brands that we have across the property um, are just on the previous slide, Zoe. So we've got our Panorama Bistro and Terrace. Uh, we've got our Cameo Cinema, which is a, a, a big
big attraction in non-COVID times, uh, uh, particularly popular with our local community here in, in the Montanati. Uh, we've got our Motion Health Club, uh, our Bellevue Spa, which we introduced two years ago. Um, and again, what's proving really important in this current climate is uh, our outdoor uh, Victorian sunken gardens, which are a, a big draw to the hotel. Um, so uh, you can go on there, Zoe, to the next slide. So just to, to, to speak about... so. Uh, you can go on there, Zoe, to the next slide. So just to, to, to speak about um, what we've done, I suppose, over the course of the various lockdowns um, since COVID became a thing for us, uh, I suppose we initially closed uh, the doors of our hotel on the 18th of March 2020. And um, I suppose we really didn't really know what was, was kind of coming at us, coming at us. Uh, I suppose everybody will remember that initial uh, closing of the doors was initially going to be for about two weeks, uh, is what we were being told. But I don't think anybody really thought it was only going to be two weeks. But uh, as we know, it's, it's gone on a lot longer than that. I suppose we've been very fortunate in the fact that we had our 26 self-catering apartments, uh, which was separate to the 107 bedroom, uh, but 16 or 17 of those apartments were actually occupied with kind of a medium term stays. Um, I suppose we're, we're fortunate that we get um, some international business to the hotel here that are really kind of, um, it's kind of corporate relocation business. Uh, and I suppose they, they, in a way, they were kind of stuck in that they were waiting for their permanent new home in Cork. They were waiting for for their permanent new home in Cork to come online, um, but the lockdown came, so they ended up extending. So I suppose we, we benefited from that for, from a little way in a little bit, and uh, it was a really important piece of business for us during that, that first lockdown. I suppose we were about maybe four or five weeks into the, uh, the, the first lockdown, where we were about maybe four or five weeks into the, uh, the, the first lockdown, where you know, it's kind of sitting down in a, in an empty restaurant in an empty hotel, kind of going, Jesus, like, what's actually going on here? And, um, you know, if, if we're not talking about ourselves, if we don't keep our name out there, like people will forget about us. So um, kind of made a decision about six or seven weeks into the initial lockdown to move our sales and marketing team uh, on a three day week. And uh, we had two very talented ladies in terms of marketing, particularly the digital marketing side of things. Uh, who really were working from their kitchen tables uh, and we'd have a weekly catch up over Zoom and uh, we would kind of plan out what we were going to do for the week. But it was really a focus on a kind of a lot of what uh, um, emphasising your USPs and um, using really strong imagery because we're very fortunate that the views from our hotel are, are amazing. They're totally unrivaled in terms of the views of the city and beautiful outdoor spaces. Also internally in the hotel, it's, it's it's really kind of boutique style in, in terms of its um, its interior design and the kind of boutique style in, in terms of its um, its interior design and a very unique as well. So again, we could focus on that and we put a, we put a focus on our people as well. So we would uh, kind of pick a, a member of the team kind of once every couple of weeks and do a little feature and then across social media. So again, it was really engaging content and, and the focus that we would have done on our engaging content and, and the focus that we would have done on our actual people would have been the content that would have got most engagement uh, in terms of getting comments back and that um, so I suppose again, in terms of keeping the name out there and uh, generating really good PR, uh, that was the kind of the, the sole focus on it. We we did a few kind of quirky videos, uh, had it, some really good campaigns, and I suppose just kind of for like I, I did feel when we reopened on the 29th of June last year that we reaped the benefits of what we had done, and I felt it was something that worked very well for us. Uh, and I suppose as an added bonus to that, and what further we emphasised the fact that we had done a good job in it was the fact that uh, we had entered the. Um, the awards with the, with the hope that uh, we might take home an award for the best use of Instagram. We actually took home three awards. We got best home uh, use of uh, Instagram, best use of Facebook, and we also took home the, the main award, actually, which is the Digital Marketing Titan uh, for 2020 from, from the Cork um, Chamber of Commerce, which was superb for the team. Uh, they had done a lot of that work from their kitchen table virtually, you know. Uh, most recently, we, we won the Cork Best uh, Business Association Best Cork Hotel Awards, and again last week, uh, we were listed as uh, in the, the top 25 hotels in Ireland and uh, the top 1% of hotels in the world uh, with a Traveller's Choice Award. So all these uh, little, so all these uh, little kind of wins, I suppose, and little kind of um, initiatives that we focused on give us an opportunity to kind of put our names out there, celebrate the successes and include our, our customer base on that. 
And just to kind of, I suppose, further emphasize the success that we had in terms of our digital marketing team was that, uh, I suppose, if I go the success that we had in terms of our digital marketing team was that, uh, I suppose, if I go back to December, just before um, COVID became a thing, we had about eight, eight between eight and 9,000 followers on Instagram. Uh, today, we have about 22 and a half thousand. And uh, a lot of that happened, growth happened during the lockdowns because of the activity that we engaged in. Other initiatives such as our Artists in Residence program, which always generates some really good PR. And we did an outdoor sculpture exhibition in our gar- gardens last year. And because so, many, so much stuff throughout the country had been cancelled, um, events such as Bloom and so on, it, it actually meant that the exhibition we did outdoor was the largest outdoor exhibition in the country last year, uh, which is to talk about. Again, it, always, it, it all generated some really positive PR because you no know, different from the hospitality industry, the, the arts industry was pretty devastated um, because of the COVID restrictions. So uh, we felt we were kind of really kind of supporting um, the artists in, in that sense as well. I suppose one really kind of big piece that uh, we undertook to a brand development uh, plan uh, with, a, with the help of an outside agency, and we involved a lot of our team uh, management uh, in that. And we did start that as far back as the end of last September when we were kind of open and operational. It could have got part and, and forgotten about, but we. Uh, between the senior team working on it uh, during the lockdown with the with the um, outside agency, and I suppose like what we did focus on was um, our four key customer personas in terms of uh, the customers that we want to attract to the Montanati Hotel because we feel it's 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 that type of hotel. Uh, and what do I mean about that? I suppose again a challenge of of last year. What do I mean about that? I suppose again a challenge of of last year in particular when we were facing reopening and not knowing what the market was going to bring um, we didn't want to be very quiet we wanted to be busy we wanted we wanted to get people back to work and the whole lot so you know we we did um kind of promote ourselves to all sorts of markets uh, including markets uh, including the family market and i suppose like you know the, the family market did come and stay with us supported us greatly and uh, we're very very um uh, thankful for that at the time as well but i suppose in terms of our own journey and in terms of of the positioning of the, the Montanati brand, uh, we did have to have a, a chat with ourselves after the summer to kind of go, look, was for them, did we provide the right kind of family type experience for them? Or like, we are just not that type of hotel. We're not a family oriented hotel. We're more suitable for couples, uh, for ram- romantic breaks, for, for girly getaways and spa breaks and, and so on, you know, and I suppose that's helped us kind of begin that journey and kind of refocus journey and kind of refocus and we're now at a at a, at a point where, where that kind of work has been done and as we re-onboard our team over the next few weeks that um i suppose key message is going to be communicated very clearly to all our team members so that everyone across the organization um is very clear about the montanati what and um, is very clear about the montanati what it is who our customer, who our targeted customers are, and why why they're our targeted customers. So I think that's a very um, a huge body of work that's been completed, and that's something that that would be very beneficial for us in terms of our our journey going forward. Uh, as part of that program, we and again ensuring that they were aligned with with um, with our roadmap in terms of where we want to bring the hotel, and uh, um, and that's something that's uh, going to bring bring value to us over the, the next few months and years. I suppose as I talk to you today, I think I'm probably, I could safely say that I'm probably the luckiest general manager in the country in that the owners of the Montanati Hotel have, has meant that uh, th- their focus and uh, I suppose investment into the into the, the hotel has continued uh, during the, each of the lockdowns. So I suppose over the course, if I, from first lockdown number one to coming out of lockdown uh, number three now, uh, we go into this season with a fully refurbished down uh, number three now, uh, we go into to this season with a fully refurbished health club um, and we managed to, to get our kitchen refurbished as well which uh, the team are very grateful for and also we have begun the construction of our new rooftop bar and terrace area uh, which is due for completion towards the end of July and is going to be something that's going to be uh, which is due for completion towards the end of July and is going to be something that's going to be truly superb and something that will be unrivaled in terms of quality and views and, uh, and standards in terms of bar service in Cork. Um, during the lockdowns, I suppose one of the, the most overused words I've heard over the course of the lockdowns is the word pivot. And so overused words I've heard over the course of the lockdowns is the word pivot. And so we did pivot and uh, and it, it was very kind of concise, four things, four really important things that, that uh, we, we focused on. 
uh, I'd say it was exactly this time last year, May last year, where we we launched our call and collect afternoon tea. There was quite a, there was quite a few um, uh, restaurants in Cork at the time that were doing the the meal kits where you finish it off at home and doing it very well and doing it to a very high standard. So we felt that there was probably a gap there for something a little bit different. Uh, so we launched our call and collect afternoon tea, and uh, it really performed really well for us. But I, I think again, in fairness to the team, I think we were cones that and uh, the afternoon tea stand it was very insta- instantly recognisable as. Uh, and very Montanati in terms of its its uh, presentation. So that was something that that went down really well. Um, we have we've had for the last kind of three years a, a vintage a Citron van here that we use in an outdoor space as a bar dispense area and dispensing for for bigger numbers. And um, so this February we relocated the van to the front of the hotel and we actually opened it up as a as a, ca- a cafe unit. So serving um, uh, teas and specialty coffees. Uh, some beautifully um, uh, freshly baked pastries and some gourmet sandwiches every day. And uh, I suppose when we initially opened it up, you know, it's winter time, the weather is poor, uh, and that maybe when the weather got better, that it it would ramp up a little bit. In fact, it's actually worked out in reverse. Uh, From when we opened it, we were extremely busy just for the simple fact that people couldn't move outside their five kilometre radius. Uh, People were working from home and uh, we're we're quite close to a lot of residential areas here in Montanati, close to a lot of residential areas here in Montanati and people just wanted to get out and it just showed us the appetite that was there for you know wanting to get out and wanting to have something different and any excuse to get out of the house and actually the weather wasn't too bad in, in february and march like you know so people were coming out and uh, have getting a coffee as they went for their walk you know so people were coming out and uh, have getting a coffee as they went for their walk and so on you know so uh, and actually as we go get closer to reopening because restrictions are being eased the, the, the cafe van is actually getting quieter but that suits us too as we we get close to reopening because we will re- relocate the van uh, during the first lockdown, we were occupied, as I mentioned, but the hotel itself was closed. So during um, the subsequent two lockdowns, we, we remained open for essential workers. Now, it only meant that we might have be, had between 10 and 20 rooms per night, um, but it meant that, you know, we served breakfast in the morning, we served dinner in the evening as well. Um, and it just meant that that we could have more of our team members. We're not, uh, I go back to what I was speaking about, uh, attracting families. Neither is the Montanati Hotel a function hotel where we do big banquets or weddings uh, for 200 or 300 people. Uh, quite the opposite, in fact. Um, we, we do private dining for a maximum of 60 in normal times. Uh, and the wedding market really isn't, because of that, the wedding market really isn't anybody's around Christmas time uh, because other hotels are closed. People's weddings were, were being cancelled and they were deciding last minute, look, we're just going to go ahead with it. Uh, we can only, there can only be six people plus the bride and groom at the wedding. So we started taking a few of those bookings and, and actually, Actually, as it turned out, we were doing between six and seven a month uh, between January up to and including this month. Um, so between six, seven weddings a month. I know they're only for eight people, but added to the essential workers staying in house, added to the, the cafe van, added to the call and collect. It actually meant that in comparison to this time last year, where there was 11 of us working a four day week in the roster, we actually had like before we started bringing staff back, we had up to 45 people on our roster. We actually had, like, before we started bringing staff back, we had up to 45 people on our roster this time around, uh, uh, albeit working a three or a four day week. But it, that makes a huge difference to to us. It makes a huge difference to, I suppose, the vibrancy and the bit of life around the hotel. And it just gives people a sense of purpose in terms of coming to work and to work every day and that they're focused again. And it actually, in terms of reopening for the people who have been working throughout, uh, it actually makes the reopening of our hotel uh, much smoother and uh, much easier and, and less stressful on them because they're not. They're, it's not a case that they they haven't worked in six months like like a lot of other people like you know which in the first week or two. I'm not going to go through this list because everybody knows it. Uh, everybody who is in the hospitality industry, be it a customer or in the industry itself, will come across these as as being their new normal. Uh, what I would say is is that you know for things such as safety screen signage, face covering, safety screen signage, face coverings, uh, hand sanitizer, fogging machines. If you'd asked me about those things a year and a half ago, I wouldn't have had a clue. And sure, why would I know? It's not something that we would put into a hotel. So I, I did find our relationship with FCP to be absolutely invaluable in terms of kind of a sourcing suppliers for those types of products and uh, and absolutely getting the kind of a sourcing suppliers for those types of products and, uh, and absolutely getting the best price and, you know, the ease of kind of getting out 
a lot of hand sanitizer and dispenser units and fogging machines and so on um, uh, being really important and and the FC, FCP guys certainly helped us out hugely on that side of things. Um, I suppose challenge at the moment is is the recruitment and retention of, of our team um, and <clears throat> certainly having 45 people on the roster as opposed to 11 this time last year has certainly helped us on the retention side of things uh, but I was not forgetting the fact that when we did close down initially we had up to 150 employees on the books and there's quite a few of them that have been I suppose uh, in uh, following the restrictions that time um, so I suppose what we did this time around in the in the November lockdown, we have a system called Alchemy, and and we kind of upgraded our system to include this employee app. So we were now in a position this time around, um, where we could actually uh, can instantly commun commun specific department in the hotel or to a specific individual if we so wanted to. So that has uh, improved our communication, one-to-one -one communication with our team members massively, you know, and I suppose in the the deepest darkest days of of the lockdown, that that's been hugely beneficial to us. Um, back in November time, on the idea of one of our employees, over lockdown, we did a remote challenge where we challenged it, our team members to, to walk at least one kilometre a day and take a picture out, out while you were out walking and post it up on, on our team platform. And uh, if you so wanted, you could donate 10 euro to um, to a kitty that we're running at reception uh, that we would do donate to charity. So in the in the last few weeks, reception uh, that we would do donate to charity. So in the in the last few weeks, we donated uh, 500 euro, which, which the staff members here in the hotel raised uh, in November as part of that remote kind of walking challenge. And we donated that 500 euro to the Cork Penny Dinners, which which was really good, completely driven uh, from, from our employees. And uh, that was a really great, good. completely driven uh, from, from our employees. And uh, that was a really great initiative. And I suppose on the back of that, um, we decided that we would make April our kind of Montanati month of wellness. So we put it, put together a little program um, of events that would run on mon Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, a half an hour in duration each of the Monday, Wednesdays, on mon Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, a half an hour in duration each of the Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays, so uh, it, across the month. So on a Monday, we would have uh, Stephen, our, our health club manager, would do a, a, a little fitness session for half an hour. On Wednesday, we actually uh, engaged with uh, an org organizational behavior consultant uh, who, was, who would come in uh, via Zoom and would do um, would do a talk on kind of, I suppose, kind of really kind of positive mindset, kind of dealing with stress and anxiety and creating kind of good habits in that. And really just the whole idea of this was preparing people for I suppose coming back into the workplace and uh, kind of having a positive mindset and let any kind of assistance that that they need and then on a Friday we would do um we would do meditation with Martha so Martha was is one of our spa therapists and uh, she's ex excellent in terms of meditation and uh, she would do a half an hour meditation session on a Friday morning with us uh, via Zoom uh, in terms of Martha's own development it's been fantastic for her she uh, in terms of Martha's own development, it's been fantastic for her. She'd never done anything like that before. So she got this opportunity, which she was initially nervous about. But after the fourth the fourth uh, session, she was she was really engaged by it and delighted with it. And she got fantastic feedback from, from her colleagues. Out. So I think that was a really important initiative uh, in terms of, of, you know, staying engaged with her. It was a really important initiative uh, in terms of, of you know, staying engaged with our team, uh, uh, which, you know, I spoke about in the first part, what we did in digital digital marketing, which was about us communicating regu regularly and uh, engagingly with 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 our um, with our customers and potential customers. So this is our version of it as well in terms of our employee and online event, uh, recognizing International Women's Day again, where we invited a, a local um, speaker to, to do a half an hour session via Zoom um, I said one of the one of the most uh, kind of uh, the best initiative in terms of the amount of feedback I got directly from employees was something very simple. It was that at Easter time, for we had did a handwritten uh, Easter card, just wishing them and their families a very happy Easter from us all here at the hotel, and we we sent it out by post. And for those that were working over that weekend, they would have all received an Easter egg with their card as well here in the hotel. But the sense positive sentiment that that generated amongst the team was was it was amazing. Like you know, you think you you put a but the handwritten Easter card saying you know wishing them a happy Easter and say that we're thinking of them was was so well received. It was, it was really good. Uh, and invariably during lockdown, we celebrated some anniversaries in terms of length of stay, people who are celebrating 10 years, 15 years in the business. 
And at the same time, just because the third lockdown was the third lockdown and was going on for as long, uh, certain people just felt that, you know, it was time for them to, to, to move. They just felt that um, the industry was a little bit too insecure. They were getting job offers from other other um, areas, particularly the tech area. Uh, I would have lost two health club managers at one point uh, or in a short space of time to uh, two health club managers at one point uh, or in a short space of time to uh, uh, a lot of uh, kind of tech companies, you know, so um, that, that invariably kind of happened, I suppose, across the board in terms of our industry. So that has left a, a lot of gaps. And uh, But we continued our recruitment process uh, and we certainly saw the value of my teams and Zooms in that process as well uh, in terms of uh, kind of the recruitment process. So at the moment, as we prepare for reopening, um, we're we really put a, a really detailed training plan together for the various departments in the hotel. So um, we're kind of onboarding our new employees in the next couple of weeks and re-onboarding some. And considering a lot of them haven't worked since Christmas time, like you know the, the re-onboarding kind of you know almost kind of doing a, a, a refresher in terms of induction to the hotel. Obviously, COVID safety guidelines are still a very big part of our day to day and how we operate. So we ha- kind of have to remind everybody on that and ensure that everybody is getting regular training. Um, so ensure that everybody is getting regular training. Um, so we have brought our team members back on a phased basis uh, over starting kind of last week and again this week and uh, the following week in the lead into the 2nd of June. Uh, so we can focus on uh, specifically targeted uh, kind of training in specific areas of the hotel. Um, and again, kind of training in specific areas of the hotel. Um, and again, I suppose it, like the recruitment process, we had a, we had quite a few vacancies to fill. Um, and again, we kind of drew on our social media kind of platforms um, and our social media audience to kind of put up some kind of adverts in terms of positions that we had available. Uh, so certainly in terms of when we put up an ad, we had we received uh, over 100 applications in the space of 48 hours, just solely uh, on the back of what we put up on social media. So just because because to show that you know our employer brand and our message is strong and it's something that, that we should always kind of um, keep a focus on as well and I suppose what we found challenge we're being challenged on our rate of pay so it's amazing how things can change so quickly in that you know we I can have a chat with some of my my managers in the hotel in terms of recruitment and where we're at and we're in good shape and uh, you know we've we've got a few new people coming in so we have the right amount of people in the various departments and then 48 hours later, the two have come back within that period of time saying that, well, I've actually been offered uh, more money in the hotel down the road uh, for the same job. So I, I'm not going to take up your offer. So, again, that's kind of it put us in a, in a situation where we're kind of being challenged on, on rates of pay. And that's something I think that's going to be, going to be a, a, a real challenge, certainly for the next three or four weeks. So, again, our huge, uh, we're going to put a huge focus again. This is a, all ties in with the the targeted training, the specific training for certain departments, and the the phased uh, reintroduction of staff back into the hotel. Is that that our focus has to be on the welcome and our service standards as we reopen. Um, people haven't a welcome and our service standards as we reopen. Um, people haven't our customers haven't be, be, been away. Somebody said to me recently that our customers ha- will have forgotten how to be customers, and that we so we need to be well trained when when they come back. We need to be able to give them confidence that. We know what we're doing, that we totally understand the COVID guidelines. We can give them guidance and direction and that, you know, of course, we need to have an amazing welcome and fantastic service standards. And so, yeah, so we're working on making sure that the the property is right. We've uh, plenty of painting and and so on going on, making sure the place is looking good. Uh, Our gardeners are very busy, although not in in today's weather. They're probably heading for shot. Our people are match fit as well. Um, I suppose promote with a big focus on promoting our locality and uh, the visitor attractions in the Cork area. Uh, Visit Cork, which is an organization here in Cork, a tourism organization, uh, did a, an amazing series of uh, webinars or, um, over the last kind of webinars or um, over the last kind of three or four months where uh, every Wednesday they would have had a, a, a guest from four visitor attractions across Cork. And that ran for, I think, about 10 weeks. Uh, so four four visitor visitor attractions a week got a twenty minute slot to, to present. So our our staff now had that bank of a twenty minute slot to, to present. So our our staff now had that bank of um pre- presentations that they can draw on in terms of kind of knowing where to recommend uh, for our customers coming in, and that's going to be really really vital for people because people want to get a 
during the day. They want to visit kind of, you know, West Cork and so on, and maybe use the Montanati as its base. They want to visit kind of, you know, West Cork and so on, and maybe use the Montanati as its base. Uh, so that that's something that we're just making sure that we have all that information ready. Our Bellevue Spa has reopened already, and um, and bookings are are quite good. Uh, so again, it's our local market that that's kind of supporting us there at the moment. But it's great to have the the spa kind of supporting us there at the moment. But it's great to have the the spa team back in, in the building and doing what they do day to day. And it, it's uh, so that's that's really positive for us. And um, so yeah, we've lots of new new packages. We've new menus coming out and new offerings across across the the hotel. And and as I mentioned, the vision, mission, and core value. And really, um, and doing it the Montanati way. So that's that's our big focus in terms of reopening right now at the moment. So that's that's it for me. I, I hope um, you enjoyed the presentation. I hope it was helpful, and uh, I'm happy to answer any questions anyway if anybody has any. Thank you very much. A little probably over our time, but we we do have just a couple of quick questions, and I suppose Brian, just while you're still there, probably. You're well, and you probably did touch on it just there on your last one, is in terms of uh, the anticipate much apprehension in terms of guests coming back into the hotel and how you just managed to kind of, um, and how you just managed to kind of um, deal with that, I suppose, and with COVID, I suppose. Is there anything you can kind of do? Yeah. It's a funny thing, David, actually, because uh, if you think about it, we'll be dealing with uh, vaccinated guests and non-vaccinated guests, which is kind of new for us because, like, we kind of the, the, the reopening back in December and also the reopening last year in terms of COVID safety measures, the wearing of masks, and we kind of know how to run our hotel now in COVID times. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see the behaviours of, of customers who are vaccinated versus those who are not vaccinated. And if that throws up a different kind of challenge to us this time. But no, I think we're at this point that, um, you know, that we've got everything in place that, that we need to have in place to, to show that we're safe. And uh, like the training is very good. There's also the Fault Ireland COVID safety charter, which we've, we've taken part in as well. And all our staff will have done that before they come back to work. And we've got a really good induction induction program now as well, which covers a lot to the staff that you know will be apprehension amongst the customers coming in. So you know you need to be knowledgeable, you need to be comfortable, and show the customer that you've got your confidence, that you have the confidence, that you know what you're talking about. Yeah. But what does throw up David is that the staff coming back are a little bit apprehensive as well. <laughs> so yeah. they're asking the question, oh, so you got after we made them like, yeah, look, the guidelines, these are the guidelines, and you have to wear yeah. a mask vaccinated or not so it, okay. it'll, it'll be a few little differences this time around i think okay thanks brian and nick if you're there i don't know if you'd hear me there just one question i suppose in terms of from the drinks industry side of it obviously credit has obviously you know will be drinks industry side of it obviously credit has obviously you know will be tight obviously with a lot you know with publicans having gone through a very tough time over the past 15 months well, has there been kind of a, a particular approach from a drinks industry perspective in terms of how that's been handled sensitively, I suppose, heading back, sensitively, I suppose, heading back to reopening? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah absolutely, uh, David. We've, we've engaged with all our customers um, sympathetically in all these areas, um, extended credit, um, um, making sure that they were getting full support from the suppliers, to, uh, whether they were third party suppliers or our own brands, the payment plans. Uh, sympathetic payment plans very much being driven in consultation with the customer. So I'd like to think, I, I know from a Bunmer's perspective and indeed the industry generally, um, very, very supportive in that area. Okay, thanks for that, Nick. And Sophie, uh, I, I suppose a, a lot of credit there just in terms of great insights in, in terms of your there. And I suppose one question been asked a couple of times, where do you get your inspiration from in terms of, you know, fantastic insights in terms of, of what you're doing? with plans to reopen yourselves fully, where are you getting your ideas from? Oh God, it is um, a bit of reflecting on what's happening in the market and trying to, um, a bit of reflecting on what's happening in the market and trying to figure out, like a Dublin city centre is a very crowded place and there is a lot of competition. And every single week it feels like there's another restaurant opening which offer a similar enough menu to us. So we just need to find ways that we can differentiate ourselves or engage with customers in a new kind of way. So like the last year has given us a lot of time to actually step back and look at our business from a really different perspective, which has been beneficial in many ways, like moving into retail with the sauces and the um, 
the ice creams as well has been something we never had planned to do really so I guess just we've been trying to react as fast as possible like I'd like to tell you we take a very proactive approach owning a small business is very busy so you don't always have time to do that um so myself and my business partner uh would be very close and we I don't know we just we review how we're doing we look at what works on our social media we look at what doesn't work um and I guess that kind of thing is quite clear but it's always just trying to think of new things to do and if it doesn't work it doesn't work try different things that's great thanks sophie so listen on that note um if there's some other questions there we'll put them up and we'll send them out uh hopefully with the answers there uh with the email and copy of the pre today's presentation and webinar um after this and um, so i suppose finally from my perspective from a first choice purchasing perspective support all businesses and clients over the coming weeks and we can introduce you to new suppliers range portfolio look at your costing and help guide you over the next uh, number of weeks which i know is going to be nervous time for a lot of people and and hopefully this is the last of it and that and hopefully this is the last of it and that the the reopening this time will be a, per, a permanent one so finally i'd like to just say thank you to our guest speakers today and thank you for obviously people for joining us today but yeah thanks to nick sophie and brian for sharing some of their insights um, into and their insights um, into and I think there's some very interesting takeaways from it and um, and again just thanks to everyone joining us today and we hope to again do uh, another webinar uh, in in the future and keep you updated on trends and what is happening in the market so again thanks everybody and uh, have a good day anyway all right